Alright guys, welcome to part 2 of Project E55 ASL, and I apologize for the really long delay with this one, I didn't get an awful lot of time over the past month to work on the project, but anyways, there is going to be a lot more content coming up over the next few months, because this video is going to be about making some custom billet aluminum parts, in order to fit this clutch onto this engine, well this is the clutch meant for this transmission, which is from a 350Z, um, but I have to bolt it to an engine that is from a CLS55, so it's going to involve making some uh, custom parts and the next video is going to be about actually making the custom bell housing adapter Which is then going to complete the manual swap and then right after that I'm going to start work on the tube steel chassis and build the rest of the car from there But yeah, anyways for this video, let's just get right into how to bolt the clutch onto this engine So the task for this video is to somehow make this flywheel fit onto that engine And the problem with that is that well This is the flex plate that goes behind that engine and if you look at the bolt patterns the bolt patterns are completely different and even the um, the like centering thing that centers this um, flex blade onto the engine like they are of different sizes this one's 46 millimeters and this one is 43 millimeters and in fact funny enough even the bolt pattern on the CLS engine is different from the bolt pattern that uh, my E55 engine had even though they're the same engines from two different years they're both M113K engines um, this one was from 04 and this one's from 06 they actually have two completely different bolt patterns which is really bad for me because if it had this bolt pattern it could have worked um, pretty easily because um, this bolt pattern is actually pretty similar to the bolt pattern of this like um, it has eight bolts and all eight bolts are 45 degrees apart so what I, what I could have done is that I could have offset this by um, 22 and a half degrees and made like one adapter this flywheel could have bolted to that adapter with um, like threads in the adapter and then that adapter itself could have been bolted to the engine with um, holes that would have been offset so like the holes would go in between um, these two holes so that could have worked really well but the problem with this um, CLS engine is that like the bolt pattern is pretty weird so there's actually no way to um, make it work that way because it also has eight bolts but the eight bolts are arranged in a really weird um, pattern so these two bolts are 45 degrees apart but then these two bolts are 36 degrees apart and then there's a large gap over here and then like so I have no idea why they designed it like this why they even changed the design from um, that bolt pattern to this one but I've come up with a way to still make it work um, so what I'll have to do is I'll have to make two different adapters I'll have to make one adapter that is gonna have the same bolt pattern as uh, this flywheel so this flywheel will be able to bolt with this adapter and then this adapter will have holes on the sides um, using which it will bolt to an other adapter and this adapter will have the same weird bolt pattern as the CLS engine so it will be able to bolt to that engine I'm making these adapters out of aluminum so this is the aluminum that I'm going to be using um, you can either buy this in rectangles or you can buy it in circular shapes like for this one it makes a lot more sense obviously starting off with something circular because it's a circular shape that I'm making so this one is I believe six inches in diameter but I'm going to be cutting it down slightly because my final diameter is 124 and you'll have to cut it down because um, the way these come they're not that accurately cut like they're just cut with the band so at least uh, the ones that I buy for my uh, metal suppliers so that's why I'll need to first um, make this a perfect uh, cylindrical shape and then um, actually turn it into the final shape I need and I'll have to make two of these this one is the one for the 350z side which is this is the cross section of that side that's a much bigger spacer and then this one there's a smaller spacer that is going to go on the e55 side um, I know it probably looks all really confusing to you right now but hopefully once it starts taking shape this is going to make a bit more sense for machining the aluminum I'm using my mini milling machine which I had to modify a little to actually use it for this so I've actually um, added an aluminum block over here that moves the whole z-axis up a bit so it can actually machine bigger things and I have a turntable attached over here attached to this chuck from a lathe machine so this is actually supposed to be used with a lathe machine but I've made a custom part for it in the middle that is like that centers this thing to the turntable and I've also welded these two threaded rods on the side to clamp it down to the turntable for following the measurements from the design um, the milling machine any milling machine will actually be labeled this one is labeled in inches so I will have to do a bit of conversion because all my measurements are in millimeters uh, and the finer measurements are over here so this actually tells you like um, in thousands of inches and this one is just in inches and um, same with the turntable the turntable also has degrees marked over here so this is 160 this is 150 and then the finer measurements are uh, marked over here so by turning this I actually turn the turntable and that's how I can actually like um, machine round parts um, by turning the turntable and then cutting it at the same time. So it works pretty well for making circular shapes. It's not going to be as accurate as a lathe machine, but for something like this, it's definitely going to be accurate enough. So I first started off by cutting my aluminum piece into a perfect cylindrical shape. This one was the one for the 350Z side, so it was the bigger one. Here's what the part looks like after a bit of machining, after leveling the top surface and the bottom surface. The goal is that I have to make this side 
an exact replica of the 350Z side, so like the 350Z crankshaft coming out of the 350Z engines. Now I did measure some of the sizes from the engine I took this transmission from, so I roughly knew what the crankshaft would look like, and for the rest of the sizes I just measured them from the flywheel that I had. Since I was too lazy to machine the whole thing myself, I just used this motor that I had from the E55's panoramic sunroof, and I connected it to my turntable so it would turn the turntable itself and cut the part. This actually turned out to be a pretty good idea, initially it did screw up because I had the settings wrong, like I was turning the turntable too fast, um, so it did mess up the part from the sides, but luckily the part that I screwed up on was the part that I um, had to cut anyways, so that's why it wasn't a problem. And once most of the material was removed, I got to removing this um, center part, this is for making that hole where the pilot bushing would go. So now you can slowly see the part taking shape. This part is, this thing is the thing that will center the um, flywheel to this um, adapter, and then this thing in the center, this is the pilot bearing or the pilot bushing, and this thing centers the transmission input shaft to the crankshaft. Um, I've put the pilot bearing in right now and it's it's gotten stuck in there like uh, usually you're supposed to hammer it in but um, I was just putting it in to test fit it but it's already stuck in there so I'm just gonna have to hammer it the rest of the way down because it's supposed to go up around like this level so I need to hammer it down like furthermore. But now the next step is to drill the holes where the flywheel bolts will go and then also holes on the sides where this adapter will bolt to another adapter that will go on the E55 side. For drilling the holes where the flywheel bolts need to go, I made the initial points using a step drill. Just because the step drill doesn't move around, it gives you a pretty accurate location like where you need to drill. And um, then yeah, I just used a regular drill bit to drill the rest of the holes. I'll talk a bit more about this when I was making the other adapter about how I measured the bolt patterns. This one I was making in a bit of a rush, so that's why I didn't cover everything. After this I flipped the part over and did a bit of machining on the other side. I had to make one of those things over here that will center this adapter to the other adapter so everything is centered to the crankshaft. And here's what that side looked like after the machining was done. After that I flipped the part over again and I made this groove on the side. Um, this is just so that the bolts that go on the side, um, the head of those bolts need to be below the surface so that when the flywheel gets bolted on it doesn't hit the heads of those bolts. That's why I had to machine this groove and also smaller grooves on the side. The last thing I had to do for this adapter was to add threads in the holes where the flywheel bolts need to go because obviously the bolts need to be bolted into this adapter. For starting the threads I just used my milling machine but just turned it by hand. Um, this is just to make sure that the threads go straight in um, and I don't accidentally cross thread the thing. And later I just threaded everything by hand. So after all that machining, here's what the final part looks like and I have to say it is looking pretty good because um, all the threads are like extremely well formed, like um, I've already tried putting bolt in, bolts in there and they actually go in pretty easily. Also the pilot bushing, I did push it in all the way and it does go in pretty firm so it shouldn't come out hopefully. And um, also it's a pretty good fit, like this is the flywheel from the 350Z, well uh, the one I'm putting on. and. Um, it does fit onto that pretty well and all the holes actually do line up with the bolting points. So these holes are the holes where the flywheel is going to get bolted. And then these holes on the sides are where these bolts will go and then these bolts will hold this adapter to another adapter that is going to bolt onto the CLS engine. Um, so that's the adapter I still have to make. So for the other adapter I also started off by the same thing, just leveling the top and the bottom surfaces. And then after that I made this um, big 46mm hole in the center of the part. So now I've hollowed out the center part of the adapter and the point of this is so that it can be centered to the crankshaft because this hole is exactly the same size as the thing coming out of the crankshaft is. And the thing is that I've gone all the way through and this other adapter has the same size, like this thing is the exact same size, they're all 46 millimeters. So that means that this adapter will get centered to this thing on one side and the crank will center it to the other side so hopefully everything should be nicely centered when um, I bolt these two pieces together. The next step is to actually drill the holes in it, that's why I have my step drill over here. I'm just using a step drill to make the initial holes. And also to show you guys how I measured these holes, like where to drill them. So what I did was that um, you can just use a caliper like this one. And um, to get the center point of these two holes, so what you can do is you can measure the inner distance between the two holes and then you can measure the outer distance between the two holes. And then you can average these two values. So I've already done the calculation. So averaging these two values will give you the center point, like the center to center distance of these two holes. And I got 75, so 75 is the distance between this bolting point and this um, bolting point. 
and um, but the thing is that you need some type of reference so it, like either you can reference it from the center like um, take your milling machine to the center part and then move like 75 divided by 2 whatever that is um, millimeters towards the side and that's where your hole will go or what I've done is that I don't have a center part so I'm going to reference everything to this edge um, because this edge is fairly accurately machined it's exactly 46 millimeters um, so what, what I've done is I've done 75 minus 46 which is 29 divided by 2 because it's only for one side which is 14.5 so what I'll do is that I'll find this edge and then I'll move 14.5 millimeters away from that edge and that's going to be the exact point where I have to drill my holes and for the angles I've already also measured out the angles so the first hole would be at 0 then the second one would be at 45 third one would be at 81 um, the angles are pretty weird with this one because obviously the bolt pattern is really weird that's why all the angles are weird but I have the angles marked on my turntable so all I have to do is I have to follow those angles and um, follow that distance from the center and then I'll end up with the exact same uh, bolt pattern as this adapter. So after that it was just a matter of following the measurements and drilling the holes. I had to widen the top part of these holes for the same reason just so that the head of the bolts can go below the surface. And then after that I made the holes on the side of the adapter which will match up with the holes on the other adapter just so that that adapter can be bolted to this one. Here's a look at how the second adapter turned out. So it's looking pretty good. Um, it has the same bolt pattern on this side as the um, CLS engine. So if I put this one over this you can see that it, it has the exact same bolt pattern like the bolts are right on. And um, on the sides it has the same bolt pattern as this adapter so that means that well, the bolts are going to go in here and they're going to go below the surface so well, they're going to go in something like this they're not going to be these ones they're going to be smaller ones but yeah they're going to go below the surface and then this other adapter is going to fit right here it's going to center to this one and then um, these holes will match up with those ones and then i can bolt this adapter to this one and then finally i can bolt my flywheel over here the 350z flywheel so that's how um, the flywheel is going to bolt to the engine. So yeah, everything is looking pretty good so far. The last thing I have to do is bolt this to the actual engine and hope that everything lines up properly. I still kept my original flex plate that came with the engine. That's because the starter actually has to start the engine from there. And plus the flex plate is light enough anyways. It's only 2 kilograms, so it doesn't really make a big difference in terms of rotational mass. So after the flex plate was installed, I installed uh, my spacer. And, and talking about the torque specifications I used, I just used the torque specifications for the CLS engine, which was 45 Newton meters and then 90 degrees. After this, I bolted the other adapter onto this one. And talking about what bolts I'm using for this, these bolts are actually from a Porsche 911 turbo, or well, turbo and non-turbo, I believe they're the same bolts. Um, the reason I've used these ones is because they're fairly long bolts. And um, I went with longer bolts because I needed a longer thread. Since I'm threading these bolts into aluminum, I wanted to keep the threads really long, like twice as long as they usually are, uh, just so that because aluminum doesn't have the same shear strength as steel. So if I didn't make the threads longer, there could have been a possibility that the threads could have sheared off when I was torquing these bolts. Um, that's why I used these bolts and um, kept the threads so long. I torqued these to 60 18 meters because that's like I read somewhere online that that's the torque specification they used on Porsche 911s and since these bolts were from a Porsche 911 um, that's why I followed that torque specification. And then after that I finally just had to put the flywheel on and then the same flywheel bolts. These ones were also from a Porsche 911 since they were being threaded into aluminum. I did the same thing and these ones also got torqued to 60 18 meters. Okay, so I guess I'll call it a day over here. I've put the transmission on. Well, it's not on. It's just that the transmission input shaft has gone into the pilot bushing. So the transmission is in its proper place, like where it needs to be bolted. And this is going to help me position my transmission, like the bell housing adapter that I have to make. Um, it's going to help me get the sizes right for that, because this is exactly where the transmission has to go. Um, on the engine and the thing is that like there is a bit of a gap over here which is really important I had to leave this gap because there's going to be bolts going both ways there's going to be bolts that need to go from that custom adapter into the engine and there's also going to be bolts from this transmission going into that adapter that's how everything is going to be held together but yeah everything is looking really good so far I haven't put in a clutch for now because I still need to take the transmission off and um, like make that adapter and get the sizes right talking about the clutch that I'm using I've got this really cheap online clutch for now this is just to get the system working like I'll um, the reason I didn't go with an expensive clutch for now is that because I mentioned in the previous video I do also want to put in like um, that shifting thing like convert this 
manual transmission to an automated manual transmission. Uh, so yeah, it could be possible that I might mess up like a clutch or two in the process. That's why I don't want to um, go with an expensive clutch for now. The idea is that I'll get the system working on this clutch. And then once everything is working properly, then I'll move to an expensive clutch, maybe even a twin disc clutch. So yeah, that's everything for now. The next video is going to be about making the custom bell housing adapter that is going to complete this manual swap. So make sure to stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you guys in the next one.